Hi, <laughs> my name is Carolyn Hetherington, and uh, I am a very old actor. <laughs> I'm 85 and quite proud of it actually because I'm still working. And I've done film, I've done theatre mainly, um, I've done a bit of television, I've written a play which was my 80th birthday present to me and um, it's been produced around and it's, it's great fun. And I have worked in this area for many years since the 80s, I guess, or even before that. Um, and luckily, there's a certain amount of professional theatre with, with the Playhouse in Gananoque. I love the work. Uh, I cannot emphasise that more. And I think probably I have to blame my mother for starting it all because when she had a dinner party after the guests had filled themselves with enough food and wine, she would clear the table and I, aged about three or four, in a little frilly party dress would be put on the middle of the table and made to say a poem which she had told me, which went, I wish I was an owl's egg sitting in a tree doing nothing all day long, just sitting there with me. And then a little boy would come and gaze on me with glee. And then I'd bust my little self and cover him with me. <laughs> so, that was considered a bit naughty, I think, at the time. Funny you should ask me that. Um, now this happened many years ago and uh, in the second repertory company I was in which is just outside of London in a place called a little town called Tunbridge and um, it was a pantomime that they did at Christmas time you know the, the English pantomimes and this was specifically for a children's performance because you know if it's pantomime when it's for adults it can get a bit raunchy uh, so you have to clean it up for the kids, and it was um, it was Boxing Boxing Day, a matinee in Boxing Day, and it was the Sleeping Beauty. I was playing the Sleeping Beauty in a really tatty old dress that they had they had got from Malabar's, which was the big costume house in in London, which looked okay from the audience, but it was terrible. They <laughs> had clothes on. Anyway, three quarters of the way through the show, we lost lights, lights everywhere, stage lights, theater lights, everything. And as you know, the rule is if this happens, you freeze on stage as an actor and wait for the stage manager to either to say, get off stage or stay put because the lights are coming back on. So nothing was happening, no lights, and you could, you could feel the restlessness and the disappointment of the kids. And suddenly, from the middle of the audience came on a tiny, tiny little beam of light, and then another, and another, and another, and there must have been 50 children in the audience who got flashlights in their Christmas stockings. And we finished the show in their light. Oh, and I get I get goosebumps just just thinking about it. And so when we uh, when we came out for the curtain call, we bowed to the audience. Yeah. So that is that is stuck in my memory. It is so clear. It is so clear still. Cuz that's that's what theater is all about. You know? you have to first of all find an agent um, so that is that is the start prior to that whatever you can do whatever you can do in the way of of seeing uh, theater work of, of um, taking courses in it at university or wherever just being involved as much as you can and observing and seeing and uh, is really important. 
and then auditioning, taking classes in Toronto, some very good, good classes that were being held at that time. You know, they say that an actor will audition for a film role maybe 30, 40 times before they actually get one. But you must never get discouraged because every time you audition, even if you don't get it, you learn so much about the business and yourself. 